turning the sand to glass and destroying what was left of the settlement. It was epic. In our minds. Welcome to episode two of the Amongst the Broken podcast. Here we unpack issues and non-issues, wrapping their tentacles around creativity as we make art, talk about art, and ask questions of the stars. One such question, the name of this podcast, we will touch on momentarily. My name is Zach. I'm an artist and an art teacher. I taught middle and high school art for over a decade. Today, we dive into the fickle nature of motivation, a headwind and stumbling block alike to creatives everywhere. So let's talk about motivation, and specifically, how bad it is. Motivation seems to be a constant struggle and a source of conversation for artistic types. It gets tossed around so nonchalantly that we sometimes begin to use it and inspiration interchangeably. And forgive me, but I will likely do the same thing throughout this podcast. I was, for better or worse, raised in artistic environments, so combing through my training can be quite difficult. I often go through these large bursts of motivation and inspiration, a period where I am so excited to create, so excited to dive in and explore. I do mountains of prep work and elaborate preparations for something I inevitably don't follow through on. In the past, I have set aside individual sketchbooks for specific subject matters. I have three stories and worlds I have been working on in the background for some 20 odd years at this point. These three storylines sit in the back of my mind, ceaselessly gnawing on my brain and asking me to bring them into the open and work on them more. They never stop poking at me, and though guilt is not something I often struggle with, these little monsters in my mind can make me feel sorry for not tending to them better. The three stories each have their own name and are categorized as thus. Nether Void, the fantasy world, Catalyst, the sci-fi realm, and Amongst the Broken, incidentally, the story that this podcast is named after. This story in particular is more difficult to easily categorize, but in simple terms, it tells the story of a group of toys and dolls created by, and animated with, the remains of the souls of humanity after an event led to the demise of humans on Earth in the 1970s. So I, in my superior wisdom and affection for these three children of mine, devised a plan. A plan to devote specific space on my hard drive and a sketchbook each to these stories. I sought out sketchbooks specifically for each story, made sure they were different, and if memory serves, even thought about page thickness and binding style for the individual creature. I lovingly titled them, wrote their names on the outside with Sharpie, and stood back to admire my work. I lovingly prepped all of them and got them ready for the work, which I was so sure would flow from my glut of motivation unceasingly. Have you ever been there? And you know what? I was terrified to work in those sketchbooks. In particular, the Catalyst sketchbook was the worst. I had created such expectations for myself, and my motivation had melted like butter left out in a southern summer day. I had a finite amount of motivation, and I used it to prepare— And when it came time to do the actual work, it had deserted me. Foolish me. Although my time may not have been wasted on the prep, I have a feeling that even if I had engaged in the artwork right away, I would have soon encountered a barricade that disallowed me to go any further. My motivation was inevitably going to run out. In the end, I sat with that Catalyst sketchbook for maybe four years before I eventually came to terms with the fact that I was going to let myself down and just use it as a normal sketchbook. Ironically, it is now completely full, though not of its originally desired contents. What a devilishly contemptible thing motivation can be. I went to look into the ever-helpful Merriam-Webster for definitions of motivation as we start this discussion, and as is often the case, motivation came up as being motivated, which then led to motivated, which led to motivate, which in turn led to motive, So let's start there. Merriam-Webster defines motive as something such as a need or desire that causes a person to act, and in its adjectival form, moving or tending to move to action. Motivation, then, is the impulse, need, or desire that causes a person to act, and this action seems to imply motion in a particular direction. Aristotle adds to this by postulating that motivation was the result of a function of appetite, always relative to an outcome. Essentially, that we have an innate appetite for the thing we are propelled toward via motivation, 
in conjunction with some manner of ongoing perception, memory, or imagination. Aristotle, though always brilliant, requires some dissection to understand, at least for me. I think we know these qualities of motivation implicitly. The word may be one of those odd cases that is pretty simple to use and rather difficult to explain or define. I find these days, with a small child around the house and asking questions about everything she is capable of interacting with, that there are many, many words in the English language that I use, properly, I might add, but struggle to define. Motivation and inspiration seem to fall in this category. These definitions from Merriam-Webster at least give us a jumping off point, a place from which we can begin the discussion and subsequent dissection. I'm going to start this endeavor by positing that motivation can be a progress killer. I know this sounds weird, but a lot of anecdotal and personal experience working with artists has led to this current hypothesis. A lot of people, myself included, lean on motivation as a means to just do the work. Motivation, often just this word we toss around loosely, becomes something we yearn for, look toward, or even trick ourselves into thinking we need in order to move forward. This also harkens back to what I've mentioned about inspiration. The two seem to be linked in the mind of a creative, entangled like vines on a trellis. Perhaps in a future podcast, I will pull these vines apart and hope to gain some manner of clairvoyance about their differences. Ah, tangential digression. It comes back to this. Many of us have convinced ourselves that motivation is necessary to get our work done. Whatever skill you seek to develop, it is going to require time, legwork, heavy lifting, and whatever potentially metaphoric phrase you desire to use. And we know this. Any of us who have learned skills over the courses of our lives, even skills like reading and writing, which must be learned as we are not born with these, frankly, amazing abilities, any of us that have these base level skills or have developed artistic or musical skills understand that these must be built over time through hard work and dedication. No one wakes up and has them. Some people have the gift of talent in a particular area to propel them through the initial stages, but no one seems born with a skill. This hard work that is required subsequently does not seem to need or require motivation to function. So motivation can, by its own malicious will, trick us into thinking it is a necessary component of our artistic ventures. Jokes aside, we do often seem to anthropomorphize motivation, or at the very least, think of it as being an actual thing in our real world. What do some of these tricks look like, and what forms do they take? We can trick ourselves into thinking that motivation has to be in place to begin the work. How many of us have said out loud or in our heads, I'm just not motivated right now? And then we proceed to walk away, either metaphorically or physically. Have any of you actually benefited from waiting around until motivation calls your name? I feel like I have mountains of regret and angst tied to waiting for motivation. Motivation is oversold, and slamming your face into the grindstone is underappreciated. It is a means to progress and grow that can be relied upon. It can be romantic to identify with the artists of old, waiting around for the muse to call our name and bestow us with motivation and inspiration from on high so that we can conjure beautiful and wonderful things. I don't think this has ever happened to me. I've certainly experienced times when motivation was more accessible than others, but I don't think I have ever experienced this transcendental moment of artistic clairvoyance. In high school, I would often go over to my best friend's house. We would make sandwiches in the kitchen, dodge the angry wiener dog, and eventually head to the basement to create worlds of our own. Motivated to construct that which no man has ever seen we quickly ran into obstacles, and the drawings and creative process always proved more difficult than anticipated. Motivation proved to be this fickle horse that would take us swiftly to the base of a hill, and then when it encountered any resistance from the slope, it kicked us from its back, snorted in our general direction, and although anatomically impossible, flipped us off before trotting off for better pastures. Motivation is difficult to rely on when you just want to get some groundwork laid. On a specific occasion, we had the best plan ever. We were going to construct the painting to end all paintings. It was going to be massive, eight by four foot, displaying a female sniper hanging off of the wing of a spaceship over an abandoned world. 
the horizon of the planet was so well established and it would be bending as three-point perspective showed its fangs and a lone shot from a rail gun would be blazing across the desert surface, turning the sand to glass and destroying what was left of the settlement. It was epic in our minds. It would display our prowess and skill, a monument to our achievements. We put in the prep time, material research, sketching, planning. We got the materials. We brought the massive sheet of masonite back to my home. And the second we sat down to work on the piece, motivation evaporated as the sheer quantity of the work that lay before us became visible. I don't know where that piece of masonite is today. Likely, it was used in the construction project of one of our basements or cut up for other projects and class assignments. Relying on motivation in that moment once again led us to a dead end. Motivation can also trick us into thinking we aren't like everyone else when it abandons us. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you desired motivation, like everyone else around you? Have you ever assumed that the reason that other people had accelerated growth was because they had this elusive quality that you lack? In a true sense of the definition we talked about earlier, maybe these people do have more motivation, a stronger motive. Maybe they are better linked to that motive, or maybe they are more dedicated and stubborn. Like I mentioned earlier, while motivation can sometimes be depended on, hard work is always dependable. Dedication and stubbornness are often undervalued as qualities that allow one to keep moving forward. As a momentary segue for motivation, Hard work and dedication will not always feel like they are propelling you forward. Most artistic experts seem to graph artistic growth as a series of rises and plateaus, not as a continual diagonal rise. We desire, understandably, constant and consistent growth. But everything I have experienced and seen through my years of art and teaching suggests that this growth is often in stages, with what feels like an eternity of stagnation in between growth cycles. The funny reality is that, in retrospect, or from an outside perspective, we were straight up wrong about the stagnant time. It feels like forever when we are in it, but usually the plateaus don't last for a terribly long time. Motivation comes and goes. It's like a muse, or like the ocean. It can be tamed to some degree, but really it can only be utilized. It is untamable in truth and too massive for mortals to wrangle. You can build a boat to navigate the waves, but humans cannot tame them. And creatives cannot tame motivation. You cannot expect it. You cannot rely on it. Let's look at this from another angle for a moment. If you only exercised when you felt like it, would you ever exercise? I pretty much never feel like working out, but I do it anyway. I do it because I want the long-term benefits. I am almost never motivated to work out, and when I am motivated, it's because I haven't been careful and I put on more weight than I desire. And that motivation is tainted with the knowledge of my missteps and the impatience to get back to where I want to be. My goal has never been to be heavily muscular or pose for photos with my shirt off. My goal has simply been to be healthy and fit enough to do fun things to play a sport with my friends, or chase my kid around the house for hours on end without passing out from exhaustion. The long-term goals and benefits keep me coming back to the gym and eating well. The climbing wall, I want to do. It's fun. But the other stuff, like running or lifting, I don't want to do. I never want to be on a treadmill. I have zero desire to ever be on a treadmill. But the long-term benefits of being healthy outweigh the pain in the moment. I'm not sure that an artistic endeavor is altogether different. We desire the ability to make drawings and paintings in our heads, to write the song that changes lives, or the book that inspires a new generation. But the day-to-day -day grind is painful, and it doesn't seem to create that many steps towards our dreams. It's easy to see what we think is a lack of progress and lose sight of the long-term goal and walk away. Motivation, inspiration, as a source of momentum has to be put to the side so we can find our real motive, the long-term goal from which we can derive a consistent and reliable source of motivation to propel us on and on and on and on. <laughs> so how do we deal with this beast, this creature of myth and fable? 
we can start looking forward to our long-term goals, just like I mentioned. We can daily remind ourselves of the things we want to achieve, where we want to be in a few years, and try to shift our motivational source from a muse like a burst of energy into something more reliable. So when you find yourself devoid of motivation, you have the long-term ramifications of your momentary decisions to guide you forward. If your goal is to simply continue to improve at your playing of the violin, in that moment when your fingers ache, when your posture has started to hurt your back, when you are simply tired and want to spend a few minutes on Instagram before practicing, that long-term goal can get you up off the couch and back into your practice time. The long-term goals can help deal with the momentary lack of motivation. They can help push you just a little. When we are younger, we have intermittent long-term goals to help motivate us through the rigors of daily schoolwork. These are called grades. When you find yourself in high school or college working through the seventh essay in six weeks, not wasting your time and money with a failing grade can be of ample motivation to help you finish the task at hand. This is a motivation that ceases to exist after school, though. Some jobs will have similar things, but especially in your artistic pursuits, these intermittent goals have to be devised by you, the creative. So perhaps we ought to try conjuring some ways that this can help us move forward. How can you create artificial grades that help you deal with the treadmill of practice in the moment? These short to medium term goals are so beneficial. Often the struggles I encountered in my youth were linked to the ethereal long-term goals associated with my ideas and stories. I was so excited to embark on each journey, but I had extremely loose objectives for anything other than the five-year plan. It was like looking at a degree at the end of the college years as opposed to acknowledging the project due this week and the grade I needed to obtain at the end of the semester. Keeping your goals arranged well to benefit you can help deal with the fickle nature of motivation. What about working with motivation symbiotically? If you don't depend on it to just exist and get the work done, motivation can become a valuable drug when it hits, when it finally graces us with its presence. How can we be prepared to utilize it when it does show up? I have found that when I'm highly motivated, taking that energy and using it to create sketches for the future can be quite beneficial. The excitement attached to motivation is often quickly used up. And what better form of preparation is there than sketching out your ideas? For the writers and composers out there, this looks a little different, but the idea is essentially the same. Don't try to use this motivational burst to build an entire citadel. Draw up the architectural plans that can be used in the drought of motivation later. When I get everything prepped for a large-scale piece like an oil painting or digital drawing, In the process of preparing, I unfortunately build up expectations about the imminent artistic session. These expectations make it difficult to move once I am actually ready to begin, and having the legwork of sketches and ideas already completed can help me push through that awkwardness of the blank page or canvas. To me, it often feels like motivation itself isn't even so much the problem, but the hangover when it leaves us is the issue. The feeling of being bolstered with motivation and pushing through the uncivilized maze of doubt is exhilarating, but coming off of that high leaves you in the sea of uncertainty. Dealing with the coming down, with the withdrawals of motivation loss, seems to be the most difficult part. If you don't lean solely on motivation as a means of progress, then this impact is greatly lessened, and like mentioned before, you can go back to some of your prep for the inevitable drought of motivation. Motivation really isn't all bad then. It's a tool or potential benefit that shouldn't be leaned on but can be benefited from when it shows up. It's a little like that flaky friend that when they show up makes the party better, but you can never count on them for anything that matters. You would never ask them to bring the main course or get tickets for the concert. Treat motivation this way and it can greatly benefit you, but you won't find yourself depending on its presence to just get through the day. If we return to Merriam-Webster's definition for just a moment, motivation implies that we all have a motive, a desire to continue building skill for a particular purpose in the creative sense. We have a desire to improve or perfect something or to build or create something. Motivation by itself is not a bad thing. In fact, by its truest definition, it seems like it might be absolutely crucial 
in order to achieve much of anything. Motivation and inspiration, used in a semi-synonymous fashion as things that come upon us in the night and hold our hand through the maze of self-doubt that is the creative process, that idea of motivation seems to be the problem. Motivation itself is perhaps a non-issue. The sole reliance upon it becomes the problem. Hard work can be relied on. Putting in the time can be relied on. How did we end up here? How did this end up being our topic today? 20 some odd years of working on my own creative things and 11 years of teaching has led me to the conclusion that having a lack of motivation is a poor excuse to not get something done. Pulling back the layers of motivation, the illusions, the benefits to actually understand it is a beneficial thing. It seems many creators look to the people they admire and assume that they are constantly inspired and constantly motivated to do their craft. And frankly, I just don't think that's true. I don't think that every one of the artists you follow feels motivated to do their art all the time. I think they enjoy the end result and may even derive joy from the creation process most of the time, but I don't think they are always struck by inspiration and fueled by motivation. I think they are just like us. They wake up and want to hit the snooze button, have a second cup of coffee, or fiddle on their phones. They are, after all, human. Motivation is something the professionals have learned not to rely on. They either fabricate and create their own, or they just do the work anyway. And that isn't particularly interesting. It's not the flick of a wand or the clicking of heels. It's just basic and normal. It's not exciting at all. You are not a bad artist. You don't lack motivation necessary for the task ahead. You are just human. Welcome to the club. The t-shirts are on back order, by the way. Thanks for tuning in. I would love to hear your stories about motivation, so please leave your personal lessons in the comments. I hope you all enjoyed the podcast. If you liked it, be sure and like the video and consider subscribing. It helps tremendously. Well, have a good one, y'all. See you soon.